Steve, we've been out here all day now today, setting up some some rules, some analytics. Um, you know, we're we're looking down through here. What what were what were the specifics we were looking to accomplish today? I think the big thing for today was to try to compare a couple of different cameras to see how well they worked in the environment that we were talking about. So compare different versions of cameras. So the five megapixel CPP6 camera against the the uh, 1080p. Um, CPP7 camera, that was okay. the main goal. See which reacted better, see how they worked in comparison to each other, and um, check out the different rules and mm -hmm. also the classification capabilities at a given distance within the space that a customer wanted to check out. Okay, and I know we did that today and we're also gonna go in and actually see how Brad set those up and how the different you know cameras and CPP versions, how much different it is or easy it is to, to set up versus the older technology or older units. Right, we did um, a fairly decent job. We mm -hmm. um, set the, the uh, I'll call it the course up, and then the guys um, inside the trailer set up um, kind of like a mini command center to kind of do a comparison between the two or three cameras that we were looking at and um, easily gave a comparison side by side mm -hmm. on a couple of the monitors and things like that. And then we also had the lift truck that which gave us the different footages and all that but yeah let's go into the trailer and see the guys setting up the actual cameras and the field of views and the rules and IVA so on and so forth sounds good all let's right. do it so Joe now that we've got our application set up to emulate a uh, perimeter type detection for a customer uh, that we're testing this out with um, next thing would be to do some calibration what are the important elements on your calibration part that everybody needs to look at doing so that would be height the focal length, uh, the pitch, and the roll of the camera. All right, so these values obviously play a big role in the way the algorithm works and making sure that you actually have some accuracy in your, in your rules. So now that we have that done as well, we're gonna actually dive right into setting up a uh, crossing the line rule within IVA. Um, the idea is to uh, track objects up to 100 feet uh, with accuracy, um, crossing not one but two lines within a 10 foot span. Uh, the uh, subject would have to cross the first and then the second to create the alarm in a single direction. In this case, going left to right. So what we'll do is we'll walk you through some steps on how to do that and then we'll actually have someone go out and test it. So the first part here is gonna be actually creating the crossing the line rule you're going to go in and create a new line. In this case, you're, and then you're going to position that line on where you'd like that to be. Next, you can set the direction. In this case, like I said, we're going left to right. We're going to set up a secondary line. And then uh, we're also going to make that in the uh, same direction. And just take note that this is out to the 100 foot mark. Next steps. We want to make sure that we're selecting the option that all lines need to be crossed in order for the alarm to be triggered. We're also going to use 3D tracking and select all of these for to eliminate false alarms on smaller objects such as animals. So it has to be identified as a person before That's it sets correct. the alarm off. Now that that's saved, what we're going to do is uh, we'll have Steve and uh, another volunteer go out and actually walk it and see how accurate we are. Let's see what happens. So here they're roughly at the 125 foot mark. That's correct. We left a little bit of leeway past the 100 foot mark to compensate for any sort of distance. There's a there's a sort of a free zone beyond that 100 foot mark. So we want to make sure that we're capturing anything beyond that point as well. So you'll see here that only when they're going left to right, once they're in the field, is when they're going to generate the alarms. So both of the objects were classified at 125 feet. That's and correct. They're working their way towards the camera. That's correct. Now, if you get anything different than this, for example, if someone at the very far end of your picture is categorized as a vehicle, let's say, that's a um, a dead giveaway that you need to make some calibration and changes. 
and put those in place before you retest the, uh, the rules that you've configured. So it looks like they've both gone through in different movements and it's been successful thus far in uh, alarming any time they've crossed the secondary line moving left to right. Steve, we're up on the lift right now, and this is where we were doing the, the shootout with the different cameras, with some of the analytic rules. And again, we had some customers specifically looking for, you know, how far could they see down here? Uh, you know, what placement do they need for poles? What were some of the things that we found out today? I think the critical things are, number one, you got to do a demo. We, <laughs> we say that over and over again, but you got to test the application. You know, we have a lift here where a given distance off of the ground which is very specific to the customer they didn't they couldn't have a pole that was too high or too short uh, they had a very narrow field of view they had a given length that they wanted to follow and they wanted to track people they wanted to know accurately when people were doing certain things and i think uh, the key issues were again to cover which one of the cameras did a better job the newer technology in the 1080p cpp7 mm -hmm. or the five megapixel CPP-6, and we found that the CPP-7 camera really did a much better job with the classification piece at a greater distance, yeah. and it was able to do a lot more things that the customer in this case wanted to do, which from my perspective was a little different than what I thought. I figured that the, the five megapixel camera would have done a little bit better job, but I sure. found out that, uh, that that wasn't the case. So again, even though we always say it's good to do demos, we always learn from demos, Absolutely. just like the customers do when we do, you know, we set it up the way the customer wants it yep. to be set up and do the things the customer wants to do. It was a team event today too, because I know some of us were out in the field, some were up here, some were in the command center. So it was a, a great exp learning experience for all of us. Good weather, uh, good application. Thankfully the customer got to come up and mm -hmm. see all the stuff. We got to capture a lot of it on video. So not only did we find out for him what he wanted to do, but we've right. got a lot of material I think that is good for other people to see and use when it comes to how far a camera can use IDA accurately to, right. to do certain things to use for assessment and trigger alarms and events and things like that. So I think great. all in all today was a great day for everybody. Absolutely. Everybody got to be a target and walk up and down the, <laughs> the course. Everybody got to come up in the lift. Everybody got to mess around in the in the command center and play with the setup yep. of the devices. So again, like you said, all in all, great day and the yep. weather cooperated. So it was a good thing. Perfect. Great. All Thank right. you.